Welcome to Cape Cast. I'm here with Brandon this evening. Brandon, how's it going? Going good, Ryan. How you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. Great. We have got a special episode um, here for you today. Uh, we were able to interview Sean O'Connell from Cinema Blend. Um, he is the author of a book called Release the Snyder Cut. And without further ado, Sean O'Connell. All right, we're here with Sean O'Connell. Um, he is the author of the upcoming book, Release the Snyder Cut, uh, the crazy true story behind the fight that saves Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, it is coming out in at the beginning of March, March 1st, but pre-orders are already open. Um, and we will be placing all the links for you guys to buy that down in the description. We'll also be sending it out on social. Um, but it, it, it'll be available on Amazon. Um, any other retailers you want to mention? Uh, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Uh, there's an independent website called IndieBound that supports independent bookstores. It'll actually tell you like where to go in your area and and pick up one from an indie uh, bookstore. From what I understand, I cool. literally am learning more about this process every single week. <laughs> I knew nothing about how to put a book out. Learn by doing. It's the best and way to do I, it. Yeah, I'm hanging <laughs> on to my publisher's coattails and and doing what they tell me to do. So that's great. Yeah. Um, no, so we we uh, we appreciate you jumping on. Um, of course. Like we mentioned to you, we don't have a huge audience, but we are really passionate about this movement and we love movies. So especially comic book movies, um, specifically Snyder movies. We can that's get true. geeky then. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's get into <laughs> Dive in. That's, that's, it's one of the things that we, so there's full disclosure. We have another guy on our show um, on our main like movie review podcast called cinema machine um, who is like the anti kind of the anti comic but he likes like the keaton batman movies but he's really kind of more of like an indie guy like mm -hmm. he just likes that kind of film so it's really funny to see the we kind of go back and forth jokingly at each other of course yeah. about it yeah. <laughs> he got me this mo this mug ironically because he thought <laughs> that uh that this was a pipe dream and it was never going to happen so right jokes on you al thanks <laughs> That's and right. Now it's filled with his. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all all in Snyder merch in some form or fashion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, Sean, we thought we would just kind of jump in and ask you a few questions that we had about um, the book and kind of the process that you had as you or went through as you were writing it. Um, and kind of the most, really the most intriguing thing that me and Brandon have thought about is when, as you were going through the process and seeking out interviews and, you know, doing your research on this, um, at first, like, was there kind of like a, did they have to warm up to you or were people accepting of the whole thing or like, you know, cause I imagine it's kind of, you know, you, you, you're dealing with NDAs and you're dealing with, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff that, with the situation. Yeah, no, that's a tremendous question. Um, Okay, so you mean on the studio side or the fan side? Um, both, but I guess we were thinking more studio and actors and whoever, you know, whoever you... Sure, sure. Um, ...got involved with the project. So this was a really difficult project from this perspective. Um, and I, I kind of thought this, but and, and I kind of had to toe the line. Um, as the managing director of Cinema Blend, I have a very strong working relationship with Warner Brothers that I couldn't necessarily <laughs> jeopardize yeah. for the benefit of a book that I didn't know was going to ever come together, you know? So right. if I just started, because when I started writing this book, it was like July, August of 2019. And to them, the Snyder Cut and the idea of the Snyder Cut and release the Snyder Cut was still very radioactive. They wanted no part of it, you know? And you got to remember that this is a studio who their side of the story is that they can't do anything to promote anything without getting flooded with release the Snyder cut calls. Mm -hmm. Right. So to them, you guys are the, the, the gnats, you know, <laughs> in, in the summer air or the, the ants at the picnic. Um, but they, they get it, you know, they totally get it. And, and they know behind the scenes that like, everything that could have gone wrong with justice league went wrong and right. they kind of, they, they're eating that, you know, <laughs> but in, in their mind, they would love to also move on, you know, like, please, will you let us move on <laughs> kind of thing? 
Um, so <laughs> I had a conversation with with my friends at the studio level and said, like, I'm going to pursue this book. So this is exactly how it went down. Uh, hey, guys, I got a, a good idea for a book. I think I'm going to go forward. That's awesome. Uh, what's it about? It's about the release of Snyder Cut movement. No comment. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> they couldn't help or talk or do anything. Um, but they were literally like, more power to you. You know, we think you're great and go do it. But just know That's hilarious. we can't help you. And I'll right. tell you, like, on the flip side, uh, the next book and the, the current project that I'm working on is more about um, Spider-Man and his history sure. yep. uh, through. And Sony cannot be more helpful. Like Sony is constantly like, what interviews do you need? Who can I get for you? And wow. Warner Brothers with this was like, don't even mention to us that you're working on this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted no part of it. Um, then in terms of the people who worked on the film uh, on both versions of the film. Um, and, and this is very much coming to light through everything that you're seeing with um, Ray Fisher and the allegations that he's bringing up. Sure. Um, nobody wanted to talk like just nobody right. wanted to talk on record at all. Yeah. And I heard from everyone you can imagine who was like, this is a great idea. Um, I can't do anything on the record and all the way up the chain to Zach, you know, mm -hmm. that was just like, he can't talk, he can't talk, he can't talk, he can't talk. And I, part of me assumed that it was also because he was kind of negotiating with the people um, right. and trying to maintain some good faith because he couldn't ever burn that bridge if he wanted mm -hmm. to eventually succeed in getting the cutout. Like it would be crazy for him to flamethrow everything that, that was still there. Sure. Kind of yeah. Regardless of what had happened to him, like even though they had kind of wronged him, <laughs> Hollywood is very much an industry. And, and I don't think the fan base understands this completely. Hollywood is very much an industry where the person that stabs you in the back uh, may be your, you know, help on the next, on the very next project. It's an industry with, with very short memory. Sure. Um, and so that's why when everybody was like, oh, the Snyder Cut will never get released having covered the industry for 20 years, I was able to be like, don't ever say never because you know, the executives right. who are blocking the Snyder cut right now could be gone tomorrow. And the next group could come in and say, why aren't we green lighting this? There's a fan base that wants it, put it out there. You know, right. that's how quickly these things could potentially go. Yeah. Um, so I got a lot of stuff off the record for the book from people who at least helped me fill in the gaps um, I had to do a lot of reporting, individual reporting from stuff that was in sources beforehand. And the benefit of being a cinema blend for the course of this entire run was mm. that I had been reporting on it also. So I, I knew the story. It was just a matter of like taking the story and putting it uh, into another light. And then when you got official sound bites from certain people, I'd be like, okay, good. Then I can sort of clarify this or mm. um, give a little bit more colorful detail to that. Uh, in terms of the the business side and everything that had happened to the film. So that's interesting. So you kind of were pointed in certain directions off the record to help further your research. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And, okay. and again, a lot of it was really like, once you laid it all out, um, it was like, oh, two plus two absolutely equals four. You know, like you <laughs> see yeah. um, that it wasn't these backdoor conspiracy theories and all this kind of stuff. It was just like, no, they wanted to change direction. <laughs> They yeah. were given an opportunity because of a tragedy in Zach's life. Um, yeah. He had to step away. They used that opportunity. Um, and then you stop and say, okay, but why didn't you push the release date back? Why didn't you give them more time to work on it? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's like, oh, because they were going to have a merger. And if the merger yeah. went through and those guys didn't get their bonuses, like all of those things got confirmed, you know? Gotcha. It's all, and and yeah. then once you see it, it's like, oh, all right, well, that, that all makes sense. It's not, you know, <laughs> It's not crazy tinfoil hat type stuff. It's just, yeah, yeah they wanted their bonuses. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, there's so much static noise out there with rumors and stuff too, that like, it's probably interesting to see how things actually fall into place when you take well, how those rumors were spread in, into consideration. It's also, I don't think, I don't think anyone up until this point had, had really done this yet because I think mm -hmm. that then someone would have put this book together sure. before. But all of that information was out there, you know, it had been right. reported in all different places and it just took a matter of like finding the through line, you know, yeah. through all. 
to say like, no guys, this is how it all went down, you know, yeah. uh, on, on the, on the theatrical side. And, um, and so, yeah, I just tried to sort of weave that narrative. What's funny is um, me and Brandon, cause we've kind of, we've, we have been um, Snyder fans since well before man of steel and all that, but we kind of bonded. He's a Batman guy. I'm a Superman guy. So we kind of bonded over this whole trilogy here. And um, <laughs> well, we joke because we of the trilogy. Yeah, yeah true. We um, we jo- have joked about how the really Snyder Cub movement, well, like somebody that we know will hear something on the news and they'll come up to us and say, so what's the deal with this? Snyder, release the Snyder Cut thing. Um, like, is that ever going to happen? And then you, you kind of sit back and you're like, Oh, do I have time to yeah do I have time to <laughs> go through the whole saga here yeah. I was joking with Brandon the other day that um now we just we can just hand him the book and say here, here you go give me a call when you're when you're finished and you'll fully understand it all right so I'm really glad you brought that up because uh, I'm starting to get feedback and reviews from people who have now seen the, the finished book right like I have review copies I've sent out to a bunch of different sure mm-hmm. and um the book it was really hard to to walk the line between how do I, do I write this super in depth to, to the people who know every beat of it? Mm-hmm. Or do I step back and tell it from a bigger perspective? And mm-hmm. this was, this was really great feedback I got from editors at my publisher who had to say like, remember the people who are picking this up might not know all of this stuff, you know, right off the bat. And it's true. Like you guys, I'm sure have had conversations with people who, when you mention comic book movies, they're like, Oh yeah, I saw like Wonder Woman. Uh, you know yeah. that was good. And you're like, yeah, no, I know, but there's like so many other, more things going on. And so um, some of the people who are really immersed in the movement and are part of the day to day, I have described the book to me, and I'm glad as as the book you can hand to someone when they say like, what happened with this? You know, like what is going on? And it really right. does try to fill in. Like I'm not sure it's going to break incredible <clears throat> news for the guys who are following it. I think I've mm-hmm. got. A, couple of really good reveals and i think zach gave me some good quotes that will be really yeah. interesting to people but the book exists as like a, a a snapshot of this incredible three to five year journey you know of yeah. this is what happened and this is how this group really changed and accomplished something that that to me is unprecedented you know like i've never sure. seen anything like this before in 20 years of doing this yeah that's yeah god <clears throat> sorry uh i mean it's like it's Anytime someone I try to fill in on like just talk, telling somebody tonight about this podcast interview, I was like, like my in-laws were here for dinner and I was like, okay, um, I'm try- I don't like, I don't want to like talk down to people in terms of like, like how much do you know or how much do you want to know? How much are you aware of this, these movies just in general? Like it goes, it goes so deep in the woods. So yeah, I'm, it's, I'm glad actually that you're doing it from more of a casual uh, reader standpoint because that's definitely because I mean, for us, whenever, you know, um, whenever we talk about it, we are we know. So I mean, no, we know what's been in, on Twitter and what's been, pub, you know, put in, in blogs and the press and stuff like yeah. that. So and, and we we talk about this stuff. Even that's part of the reason why we started this podcast, because we were like, we talk about this stuff every day at nauseum, like just between the two of us, let's at least just record it because, yeah. you know, yeah. I listen, yeah. I can't tell you how many podcasts I have on my phone that are just DC Snyder centric podcasts. It's like, I was listening to another one when I got out of the shower the other night and my wife was like looking at me and it was talking about like, well, I think this is going to happen in Zack Snyder's justice league. And she was like, how many podcasts can you possibly listen to about this one subject? I'm like, there is no, there's no amount. It is infinite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's true. Like you'll talk to certain people, even people like people really close to me, people in my family who are just like, Oh, you're writing a book. What is it about? And I'm like, Oh, have right. you even seen <laughs> the Justice yeah. League movie? And they're like, which one is that now? I'm like, yeah. oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Cause where do you even start? Right. No, no I know. The story is is such an epic. What's crazy is you, you like you asked that question twelve months ago, and it's the same thing. Like that's how much. We're, like twelve months ago, you can't even you don't even know where to start. It's how long it is. Yeah, twelve it months in. Wait, 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 wait till it's yeah. out and we're able to see it. Right. And right. It's part of the conversation. 
then I think that changes everything. I think that yep. changes the way that people feel about it. I think that changes the reaction. Sure. Um, and then I'm truly glad that you guys will have the book to be able because I think once people start to watch it, there's going to be a, a lot of casual people who are just like, didn't we see this? Or like, yeah. And Affleck is back in <laughs> Batman. And you can be like, yeah. no, nah, there's a reason. Here's what happened. Right. Okay. That's, um, and we can kind of, that was one of our questions that we were going to kind of bring up as we talked um, Justice League. But how do you think um, WB should handle marketing this film? Because it's, you know, they've obviously, you know, it came out, they marketed it as it existed. Yeah. And like, do they try and tell that story of this is, you know, oh, like, do they get into that at all? Or is that too deep for general yeah, audiences? I guess to... we, were, we were trying to like think of how they could market this to people to let them know that this is a big deal, not for just the people that already know how big of a deal it is, because right. at the end of the day, that percentage of people is still very small yeah. um, compared to the casual audiences yeah. that they need to tune in. Uh, so that's a really great question. Um and, and I'm a little bit surprised that their marketing campaign hasn't started for it already. I am too. I think they need a, a longer lead to prep people to almost tell the story, you know? I agree, yeah. That this is a lost movie, you know? That this is like the the forbidden version of a movie that you should have gotten years ago kind of thing. There's mm-hmm. so much potential there with the how passionate the fans are and how integral they have been with, uh, like... So, unprecedented <laughs> so instead what you're seeing is and this is this what plays into you know for everything that zach is as a filmmaker he's even better as a marketer you know like mm-hmm. i think he plays the game like a you know a composer uh, standing in front of a symphony and he's very aware of everything that's happening and i think that that is exactly why he's showing up on the the streams that he showed up on over the holidays sure. share yeah. what he wants to share um He's their best asset. Like, I don't know. HBO Max has done traditional press junkets where they've done, you know, they're getting directors and cast members to come back out for, the, for their projects. And I don't right. doubt that they're going to try to do something. Um, the, the only person they need to get out there is Zach, honestly, because he'll be able to sell it as passionately as possible. And that's why he was part of DC Fandom. Obviously, he sold it himself at uh, Justice Con. I let's talk realistically about who from the cast would show up for a press junket. Um, I don't think Gal would because I think she just did press for Wonder Woman 1984 and was even pretty limited, you know, of who she spoke to for that. She's also, she's also got, is it red notice coming out this year too? But I'm not sure the date on that one. Yeah. Um, That's a, so um, I think Jason would, because Jason is, you know, he's really, a man. He'll fire off anything. He's a he's... ride or die for Snyder. It <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. obviously he and and um, and Ray both are kind of in the same boat in terms of loyalties to him. Mm-hmm. I mean, it seems like, and that it seen it, it kind of goes across the board in terms of just loyalty to Zach. That that tends to be the thing that you always hear, no matter what the project is. Now it seems to vary depending on like Cavill seemed to have like. A little bit of hesitance because he was also trying to, you know, do negotiate at the same time too with his. Negotiate. Yeah. I'm sure he was being advised to kind of keep his mouth shut for the most part. Not that he wanted to. He may not have wanted to talk about it. But um, and then there's Affleck and Ezra doesn't really speak. He doesn't have any sort of like social <laughs> yeah. platform. No, nope, um, pretty quiet. Um, so. Ben coming back for the Flash makes me think that he's still in the fold. Um, He's still very much a Warner Brothers guy, you know. The way back mm-hmm. is a Warner Brothers movie. I believe, well, he's directing something for Disney next, but he's a Warner Brothers guy. And you've yeah. got to imagine he would not be coming back for that project if he saw the script and felt like they were treating his character like he was treated in the theatrical of Justice League. So it does, like, yeah. It doesn't seem like he's already been embarrassed so badly because of the last Justice League that came out right. and other things in his life. But like, I don't feel like he would want to go through that again if it wasn't something he felt sure. like it was worthy of taking on but but right part of me does wonder now that you guys have brought it up if warner brothers and hbo max is just leaning a little bit too much on the fact that they think everyone just knows what the snyder cut is i think a lot of people do but i think Mm -hmm. that they need to be doing a lot more to be beating the drum for that's i agree that's exactly my worry because 
even with this, what you're talking about, Snyder jumping on like Film Junkies podcast and all, and you know, uh, ping pong flicks and all this stuff, like that's great, but you're preaching to the choir a little bit. Sure. I feel like yeah. you've got to get out there and and market the general to the audience that are yeah. going to make the difference in terms of views uh, and give them something to want. And that's why I think, and you know, I don't know if you've heard much about this, but you hear some people saying that now they're going back to releasing this as a feature instead of episodic, hmm. which hasn't been confirmed, but I'm, I'm really hoping that they don't do that only because I feel like a bite sized episodic format is going to be a bigger, okay, I'll check it out. It's an hour, not a four hour commitment, you know, it also like, kind of gives you time to generate conversation around it over a longer stretch of time, like to make people understand while it's still relevant, if it's coming out each week, you know, it's something you're able to talk about something that's new and it's not just, this is up. Well, you got a week to, this is exactly what we've been talking about lately in terms of projects having any legs um, when the, when a binge drops, you know, it's, it, they don't linger uh, in the, in the pop culture landscape, the way that the Mandalorian has succeeded by going week to week and generating conversation Right. The way that um, so Marvel is telling us that, you know, they very much want WandaVision to be that type of weekly presentation where fans can right. talk. Because one of the things that, that benefits from week to week that you don't get with the binge um, is that you can't talk to someone about it because you don't know where they are in the story. Yeah. yeah. If you <laughs> yeah. Get it, but someone else is, you'd be like, did you see? And they're like, D I don't want to talk about it. And it's just right. it cuts off the, at the at the heels. So right. um, I'm all for the the week by week release mm -hmm. and keeping everybody on the same page and keeping the conversation going i think i think that's the strongest way to go it although i do i do get why people love being able to binge something but but when you have a, a meaty one hour four part thing stretch mm -hmm. it out now one of the reasons why the publicity might not have started yet is because we haven't even heard a confirmed date we heard march but what if True. it's the end of march if it's the end of March, then you wouldn't be doing anything till mid February, end of February anyway. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. You almost don't want to peak with your. Uh, there's so much going on, you yeah. know, in terms of entertainment and streaming, and especially and, with their announcement with all the <laughs> all their films going to HBO Max this year. That's a huge one. And then I don't know if you guys saw the trailer that dropped today for the, like Netflix is going to have a movie a week. Yeah. You know, like there's so <laughs> much noise that you have to cut. Yeah. Through. And, yeah. you know, if they wait for two weeks before whatever the release date is, and then mm -hmm. Zach does an all out blitz, then, then we're. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it's just, well, you're talking about episodic release. It just like what you're talking about with Mandalorian, with um, the uh, WandaVision stuff, even like the boys, the boys didn't do it weekly. They did like little clusters, you know, like three episodes mm -hmm. here or whatever. But I felt like all that stuff, like Ryan was saying, it just continues to create conversation it allows people like us to do podcasts to do a weekly you know mm -hmm. you know put out content for and because people like that that in itself just the water cooler conversation even though a lot of people are yeah. Yeah. working in a physical office as much anymore but still like it allows even like you were saying people to not have to worry about oh where are you i mean we're all kind of in the same generic area when it comes to you know our place in the show so yeah. that just i just feel like i hope as long as zach is cool with it i mean our whole you know outlook is just whatever zach wants you know we want what he wants but mm -hmm. as far as as far as getting casual audiences to pay attention i feel like that's a much better hook to have them say okay this is episodic this is the first episode it's an hour instead of like i was saying a four hour like that's why it took so long <laughs> for me to yeah. to watch the irishman i was like man i gotta I, I just i can't i don't want to watch it in pieces i want to watch it like it's meant to be viewed of course. so it just took me months just to sit down and make time for it now I would argue yep. with this fan base, uh, you know how passionate everybody is. Mm -hmm. If they do four four one hour segments from March and through April, and then you know in by July, the theater situation is stronger, and Zach does you know a two or three week run in IMAXs, the audience oh. is still going to go back. They're going to go oh, back. No doubt. Yeah. no doubt. No yeah. doubt. So yeah, multiple it's times. Win -win. <laughs> it's win win exactly, yeah. right. and he knows that. And he yeah. wants to do it. He said he wants to do that. Now, the logistics of it, we'll see how it works out. But yeah, I mean, that's totally, I hope that, I mean, he said even, I think it was, was it Fandom that he's, when they announced that it was going to be four one hour things, he said, and then we're going to do, you know, a theatrical mm -hmm. thing as well. Uh, things change, whatever. We'll see how it, how it plays out. But I'm definitely, 
I mean, I, I know that we are of the minority when it comes to like, yeah, we're going to watch it and we're going to go see it in theaters and we're going to do all this. So that, I mean, that's a small fraction of people, but you know, can we stop for a minute yeah. and just process that we're discussing like the different ways that we're going to get to watch the Snyder cut. <laughs> I, know. Oh, I, know. I mean, it feels like we've, we've, we've springboarded to the place where we're taking it for granted. Like, Oh, oh how nuts. should we watch it? Should we watch right. it in four episodes or should we? Yeah. We're going to get to see it. Finally. I know. I know. I, 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 I think, I think you mentioned this on a previous podcast, trying to get people like to not to be like, sit back and be thankful for what this is instead of sure. getting hung up on like, well, was are they going to do the Ben Affleck series? Are they going to do a, a Justice mm-hmm. League too? Are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? It's like we the the and and that that is like you know it's it's part of that that fan. I'm like, I'm like yeah, more, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the fact that this is happening is freaking amazing, just in itself. Like it is. We shouldn't take I, that for granted. I re- there were <laughs> several days after that trailer release, fandom trailer, where, where I chat with Brandon, and I'd be like, just just. 12 months ago versus now just just think about that mentally like where where we are as like these Sean, fans the day after justice league theatrical came out ron and i saw it in an advanced screening in atlanta oh gosh and that next day we had an eight-hour conversation like just we- like just basically an intervention <laughs> with each other just like trying it was to, hilarious trying to, we were trying to we were rationalize trying to make it, like, yep okay <laughs> <laughs> this was okay right like we were you know because we were still like you know buying the narrative that you know this was still snyder's vision like they were just completing and then, yeah you know that whole thing which a lot of people fell into that that trap but <laughs> but he's not exaggerating it was an eight-hour conversation <laughs> this is a huge part of the reason why the movement um the story of the movement really swept me up is because wh- while that wasn't it for me um you know like i was yeah. very excited for the justice league but it, i wasn't live or die by it sure um, i can at least a- attach my own passions from other movies that i have wildly anticipated right and i cannot imagine showing up to the theater <laughs> with this movie that for some people you know they waited their entire lives to see these characters uh. together and and that that's what they got you know like <laughs> it's, it is such an insult to to the fan base that anyone at Warner Brothers, you know, who had any power looked at that cut and thought like, this is good enough, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's Let's see, I think, I think where like, the, you know, the, like, like he said, we were trying to rationalize things. There was one scene in the movie where I like, I had to look over at Brandon and be like, this isn't, this isn't right. Is it? It was the, it was, it was the scene where, where Brand or where Batman is rolling over his cape out in the, uh, out in Heroes Park, and he's you know stumbling. He's like something's definitely bleeding. <laughs> I just knew. I just knew Brandon's Batman heart was broken. <laughs> I just shattered. The lighting in that scene is so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's so harsh. It looks like he laid down on a uh, like a mini golf course. He does. You're right. <laughs> oh, it's it. awesome. It looks so bad. It's so it's jarring. And it's the way so- it was shot, his costume just looks so heavy, and he's just <laughs> laying all over this piece of leather cape. And <laughs> just- and, like people looked at that and they were like, "All right, go ahead." That's funny. That's funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's awful! It's so awful. So many of those moments, just yeah, too yeah. many. It's- that's what we're so excited though about this this new cut is like i mean it's going to be such a juxtaposition from what came before it and i just Mm -hmm. i can't wait like i i just i'm so ready for those the feels that i'm anticipating with this movie because that was it was such a disconnect with the last one and such a like blatant like shoehorned attempt to try and make this into yeah. something that it was you know something familiar with a marvel movie you know i mean you can see you can see the like you can see them their the fingers are were trying br- to make yeah. it that it, it's like <laughs> it's just i don't, I don't know there's so like couldn't problems. couldn't fully commit to the color grading either direction and it's, it's just oh. <laughs> um i'm even going to go so far as to say this um i don't think that any of us are really truly ready for it um yeah because there's no movie that you have built up in your mind for three and a half years. Like mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's not fair to the film, right? Right. Like 
this movie has to cure cancer to, yeah. to meet its its myth. Right. Yeah. And so I almost think that the fans are going to have to watch it a, a couple of times to oh, yeah. truly process it, right? Because the first time you watch it, for the bulk of it, you're still going to be saying to yourself, like, how am I watching this? You know, mm-hmm. like the the story of the, of the movie is going to overpower the movie. Sure. And then you're going to have to come out of it and then you're going to have to go back into it and be like, all right, now I really got to figure out what this is. <laughs> yep. And it, well, that's, a, that's, that's what's so amazing about these movies is the emotion that he packs into them. Hmm. Like when we watched the theatrical for justice, like there was that emotion just was not there. And I remember the trailers leading up to it. They, you know, they, they would plop in things that weren't actually in the theatrical, like the, the scene on the Kent farm where mm-hmm. Lois walks out on the, you know, the porch mm-hmm. and like me being a super Superman fan, I'm like a sucker for anything. Kent farm, Paul Kent. Like, so, you know, I'm like tearing up when I'm watching this trailer, we'd go in the movie and I get, it was itchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you smell good. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, like you were saying, Sean, it's just, it's, it's going to be very surreal sitting down to watch this. And, um, and, and just like every Snyder movie, in my opinion, they, they demand repeat viewings and you pick up something when you go back and watch. I, I've yeah. watched BBS so many times. And every time I watch <laughs> it, I find things that I didn't pick up on the first time. Yeah. Um, but that's just the way it goes. And that's what, I mean, that's what this fandom is going to do anyway. They're going to watch this over and over and over and over again. Can um, you imagine all the reaction videos that are going to come out at, when this movie comes out? <laughs> it's going to be absurd. <laughs> well, and, and I made a, a comment about this too. And a, a ton of people, uh, like professional people disagreed with me where I said, like, there's also the other side of it where people are going to watch it and dismiss it as like, oh, it's the same crap. You well, know, they've already done that. They've, they've already <laughs> yeah. done it. Their minds have been yeah. made up, you know, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So we almost have to be immune to that also. Yeah. It's bizarre in that it's a movie that's not for them. And yet it should be, I hope, you know, a more all encompassing uh, story that, that more people can get behind. Um, yeah. The, o- the only hope there is that enough time has passed where people have, and, you know, there's still going to be people who have, already made up their minds i'm not a Zack snyder fan i don't like anything he does but perhaps there are people who have you know tons of superhero movies have come out since bbs got shredded you know sure. they've seen a lot of the same and maybe we're at a point where some people will start to be like okay this is a little bit different than yeah. you know some of the movies that we've seen over the last few years and different is refreshing it's just interesting um, because like his watchman was well received like 300 mm-hmm. was well received. Dawn of the Dead was well received. Yeah. Um, it's just his take on on the DC characters t- to me was was so initially different. You yeah. know, I think he was swinging for bigger fences right. than I anticipated, which is why my gut reaction to Man of Steel was just like, uh, I don't, this is not my Superman kind of thing. Yeah. You know, sure. Um, sure. And it took me years to really dial into mm-hmm. what he accomplishing with that and it was so someone explained it to me more from the immigrant story you know and yeah and i i didn't view it that way i didn't see it that way um and mm-hmm. I, or i started to figure out where he was going from and then i i thought they were rushing into the paranoia of of him but when in bvs but when i understood that you were trying to see it from batman's perspective like he would be terrified you know mm-hmm. of of this threat that's all of a sudden a little bit above his pay grade. And right. what would that man do? He would try to figure out how to have the ways to bring this person down. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Um, it all made sense. And it's real. It's a, it's an epic reach by a filmmaker to try to do that over the course of two films. And now he knew where he was going. Right. Mm. And so almost like you said, the, you know, the only two films of this trilogy, <laughs> Um, I want to see that natural conclusion, you know, yeah, right. I would assume that Zach was going in a direction, you know, yep. and now we finally get to see, not That's... only do we see that direction, but he would have had to, in 2017, bring it down to that 214 level, you know, or the mm-hmm. two hours and however many fill in the blank, he would, it still would have been compromised to a certain extent. Sure. Not right. Four hour, the full four hour, I'm getting a chance to show you everything I wanted to do. Oh yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it sucks that it took, it had to go this route to get here like especially with the tragedy of his daughter but like this is 
such a better option for this film as a film than it would have been theatrically, especially giving if he had just had had played played ball with the studio and made all the compromises for yep. the initial release. This now, works out. Let me ask you that though. Sure. Would you rather have gotten his version in 2017 and not gone through this? Um, <laughs> Glad you went through this. <laughs> the fifth. <laughs> I mean, no, so I, yeah. Go ahead, Brandon. It's. I mean, it's as far as going. We we haven't gone through anything in in relation to. I mean, we we're just you know fans. But as far as you know, like, um, I. That's a hard question. I mean, no. Yes, I think so. I think this is this is the perfect storm to get us to honestly a better situation than yeah. even even though we wouldn't have probably. I mean, grass would have been greener. We wouldn't have known it would have been if this if his movie had come out in 2017. We'd be like, oh, that was that was good. You know, it was a little too jokey, but you know, it would have been. You know, it would have still had his fingerprints on it. Sure. Uh, it would. I think it still would have felt like a Snyder movie, but this what it is going to be hundred percent like in my opinion from what i gather it's going to be his movie you know full you know full clip, that's but. that's the other thing too we're talking about episodic versus a full release like i lean towards episodic just because if you want to talk about like longevity with hbo max sure you've got that month where you've got an episode coming out every week but you also have the potential for we're talking multiple seasons beyond sure if you continue so from a dollar standpoint, from a subscriber standpoint, you would imagine that would be more lucrative. And I believe that the streaming services need content, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. why wouldn't they invest in a brand that is, it's a proven IP, first off, it's yeah. a proven filmmaker. Um, so as long as he wants to continue telling in that format, you know, right. why wouldn't you invest? In, and there's you know? nothing of this caliber that has ever came out on a streaming service. You're talking about, I mean, essentially, I don't know what the budget at, at initial production was, I mean, I know that they had to take on like what Justice Justice League Mortal, and then obviously the reshoot budget and all that stuff combined. But whatever, like you don't have like a a series that has this type of production value to have ever been on a streaming service before. No, closest would have been something like Watchmen, which you know was or Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah, Game of Thrones for sure. Um, you know, and, and you, you run the risk of over, overstaying your welcome, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, Game of Thrones being one of those shows that like the fans would almost critique the last season as being, you know, the showrunners almost checked out. So mm -hmm. I would almost like to have, if Zach were to continue it, have it be that five film arc, you know, the, the five, a piece story arc that he wanted to continue, but, but just still have an end in, in mind, you know, like still have a place where you, where you finished it strong. Right. And then theoretically branch out to other types of shows that you could tell. Um, I, I mean, I, I still think HBO Max is the natural fit for, for Ben's Batman. Oh, yeah. And you. And I, we all hope and pray every <laughs> night by our bedside <laughs> to our Lord and Savior, Ben Affleck, that he's going to take that. <laughs> so over the, last, over the last few years, after all this went down, there were multiple mornings where Brandon would call me and be like, had another Batfleck dream last night. <laughs> sure. now, it's, do you guys want him to direct, or are you okay with him just acting in it? Uh, well, I mean, I'll Ben's my favorite Batman. One. I, I, I would love for him to direct. I know how much of a challenge that could be, especially if it's like an episodic series type thing. I mean, I'm not like I just want I just want more of his Batman because I feel like that was such a, a great start in my opinion with bbs his version of batman and then i wasn't a big fan of him in suicide squad as far as how they treated uh his little cameo um but i i just i love ben as a director and i would i would just i would jump at the chance to see that his version of that character again outside of what we're going to see in zs jail so. how great is that shot of him uh blocking the shots from the parademons oh like, man now how great is any shot of him and <laughs> how awesome and, was it when he sent out that or i think it was him that put out that um footage of deathstroke coming out of the hangar oh, yeah, yeah. on on social <laughs> i know brandon lost his mind when he posted that <laughs> oh the scene that breaks my heart the most in uh theatrical cut you were mentioned in batman laying on the ground um <laughs> complaining 
but mine is when Superman shows up to the fight at the end. <laughs> the smile. Smiling Batman. <laughs> smiling Batman is the creepiest <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's yeah, like we, I can just see the director behind camera being like, "We got a cowl on, so we can't really see what you're doing. You have to exaggerate even more. So move uh, your mouth as much as you can." <laughs> yeah, we use that gif a lot in text conversations. Yeah, oh, to its detriment. It's so man. Oh man. Well, listen, Sean. So, we don't want to keep you too long. I don't know how much time you have left, and I know you, you have a limited. Like amount. one more. I could probably do like one more question. Okay. Like. Sure. Let's talk, if you don't mind. Do you have any theories going into this movie as far as like something that I know that you do a like a breakdown uh, episodic mm-hmm. thing with through Cinema Blend, but do you have like any like anything that you feel strongly about for this movie moving forward? That's like um, I know I think maybe you guys had talked about like um, maybe the the league loses the fight and Flash has to go back to the Speed Force and fix it. Um, yes. Do you have anything that sticks out that's like, maybe it's that one that you would like to elaborate on, but just curious if there's something that you're like, I think this is the way this is going down. Just your own personal. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll go into detail about that one because I think it, it could be really fascinating. Um, it, you have to go back and look at all the things that Zach shared on Vero, right? Like the yeah. things that he went back to share. And there's that the shot that he shared on um, 214, which showed it looked like multiple flashes. Um, and it looked like he was running through a scene where the survivors were getting uh, rescued from the uh, from underneath Gotham Harbor. I think right. that's where they mm-hmm. were being pulled from. Um, and it sort of showed as we're going through it. He was asked one point what uh, I think he was asked by Patty at DC Fandom, like, what is he most excited to show people? And he's, he mentioned the Flash. He said, I think you're going to get to see some stuff from the Flash you didn't get to see before. And Flash to me is mm-hmm. one of those characters that got completely gutted and watered down in theatrical. Um, yeah. I know that he's capable of so much more and they used him for comic relief. Right. And there's the shot that we see of Ezra kind of in the speed force and there's an explosion going off. Uh, it looks like, and I've had people say to me that they uh, believe that that's the league failing, you know, like not pulling it off and Ezra having to use the speed force to go back in time, potentially mm-hmm. using the treadmill. I, do you think we're going to get to see the treadmill? Do you think we're going to get like, I would lose my mind if we saw Are the treadmill. That deep into it already, and I, I mean, it's. Oh gosh, that'd be so cool. I don't <laughs> think so, but I would be so, as a DC fan. <laughs> be when awesome. you go back and watch like um, BVS trailers or Man of Steel trailers, like Zach likes to put in a shot that when you see it out of context, you don't really know what it is. Um, but then when you we see have one of those film, you're like, oh, that was a really significant moment that he mm-hmm. showed off. So I go back to why he would include a very quick shot of black suit Superman uh, punching Steppenwolf, because that seems to be pretty revelatory, even when you know that, like, of course, Superman's going to have to show up and he's going to have to fight. So I've sort of backpedaled and thought, like, how do you give Superman a great, you know, return to the to the battle moment kind of thing? Not mm. like I believe in truth. In truth, yeah. <laughs> like, it's just awful. You know, that's horrendous. Cringy. So I could see that there's a moment where Steppenwolf, in the first pass through the story, uh, manages to get the upper hand on the league and and defeat them. Um, and it's you know, it's almost like you see his part of that of that scene where he's coming down. And he decide, and he figures a way to defeat the league. Maybe he destroys the mother box, or maybe he d- taps into it, or does something with the mother boxes that creates an explosion. Then Barry sort of runs back through time, has to go back through the the moments of the movie that we just watched. Um, I've I've heard some people theorize that maybe he goes to connect with Superman and says to him like, "You have to come back," because there's the really cringy dialogue in the theatrical cut where Lois just is just like, "I guess you have to go now." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably should go join that fight, right? Like, but wouldn't it be so much better if Barry were to show up and be like, we lost, you know? Right. And we're gonna yeah. lose if you don't come with me, kind of thing, or you don't help. And yeah. then then Superman's come back to battle moment is him punching Steppenwolf in that moment. And it's like, <sighs> oh, this is when Steppenwolf beat them, but wait, hold on, yeah. Superman showed up and, and he's gonna stop it. Yeah. So then you think like Zach including that is him him saying like 
this moment is going to be so badass. Yeah. <laughs> you guys see it. You're going to lose your minds. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Show up and sort of save the day. And so, so I don't know. I'm pie in the sky. No, I mean, I think there's, I think there's credence there. One, one thing that I remember uh, that kind of gives a little bit of, I mean, it just in, as far as a theory of my own for this one, I, I remember watching the theatrical and right after Barry, when they're reviving Superman, Barry, touches the mother box if you remember he goes through a wall in the scout ship i don't know if you remember this part but it doesn't play it nothing comes of it but i was thinking in my head like i wonder if this is a part like was intended when he goes through the scout ship wall that's when he enters the speed force that's his first experience in the in the speed force that would be cool yeah Um, it's almost it's almost hidden in camera movement but yeah it's definitely yeah (laughs) definitely happens and so that could give a little bit of credence to that theory to like okay this is how he first taps into it and then that's why he's like okay well maybe i can change things if i you know run fast enough to go back in time or something that's um that's just that's just something that's all well Well, you're talking about superman and he has to convince superman to come back and join the fight then you can get a shot of them running side by side you know to to return to the fight that isn't the uh, I'll take the ones on the left, you know, and, and Ezra, pick up this whole house and it doesn't fall carry apart. the building on top of your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So you mentioned before you go, I want to ask you this because we, we have kind of, yeah, this is this theory and I want to get your opinion on it. Okay. Um, you mentioned Snyder putting things in trailers that at first glance, you're like, Oh, that's a, whatever it, it's, it's nothing. Misdirection stuff. Misdirection. Yeah. Well, as far as the audience, you're like, Oh, it's just a, it's just a hologram of Superman, not Supergirl. That's, that's where I'm going. So <laughs> <laughs> in the, even in the theatrical trailers, they had this shot of Bruce looking at what we are made to think is Superman, a hologram yes. of him. Do you know what shot I'm talking about? Yeah, but they just filled it in with the well, second cut of the, they filled it in with another <laughs> a different angle of him taking flight but yes. what we think is not our, even going back to okay we think the leg looks a little feminine we think the cape's a little different but it doesn't we don't think that um his the the person who this is the wrist there's skin superman's uh suit goes all the way to his wrist you can see right. not in the latest trailer because they they cut it quickly where you can't see the wrist anymore right but if you go back and watch the old one you can see the wrist all right I'm talking like a crazy person i understand that but i'm just trying to get everything out so far I'm okay so we there's think we're shows, not crazy there's a reason exactly. he shows the hologram cape like yeah right it's, it's you're you're supposed to think it's superman this is just our theory we know that zach when he broke down his trailer um, when they, they re-uploaded the trailer and when he was doing the, he took after that hologram shot, like a few scenes later, he took questions from Vero and he was, somebody asked if there were other Kryptonians mm-hmm. in his universe or whatever. And he's like, that's an interesting question. And we all know, I mean, you, I'm sure you know the that, uh, yeah, the open pod is meant to be Kara's that comic that came out, uh, in tandem with Man of Steel. He, he, he took that question in my opinion, specifically because, uh, he doesn't there were so many questions he was just pull, yeah he was pulling random questions he, he pulled this he question up. specifically and was like yeah i wonder if there is kryptonians i mean you know there is a scene where they walk through that when they're bringing in clark's body they look they make another look at the pod and we know that cyborg taps into the scout ship and sees whatever and right. cyborg is also the one that's showing these holograms so we just think that when cyborg's going through what he learned from the scout ship there's a little blip that he shows kara Okay. And it's not like we're not saying Kara and Supergirl is in this movie. We just think that this is a little like, hey, like, you know, this is a little fan thing. Like Supergirl exists. We, we know she does exist by the comic. But yeah. what are the fun of these movies if you can't put on your tinfoil hats? And but <laughs> back to your point, when you were saying that the, they they revealed that that wasn't the case with Superman taking flight in that hologram. We yeah. think that that was put in there to be like, see, like, stop thinking about this. Like, uh, you know, I'm as far as the one. Supergirl theory. Yeah. We think that that's a total Zach move. Like, see, y- y'all just move away. Don't think about this anymore because maybe you got too close. We're not saying he's d- directing this at us specifically, but yeah, the people yeah, yeah. that think that that's a thing. And, and again, to go back to the composer and the symphony uh, analogy, like he is orchestrating every step of this. You know, he's not picking questions at random. He knows exactly what he wants to pick. Um, exactly. And, and he... He is so, I've never seen a filmmaker more dialed into the knowledge of the fan base and the topics that the fan base are covering. 
Yep. Um, he knows when to weigh in on Vero. He knows when to answer comments. He knows that any answer he gives to anybody on Vero is going to get reposted on social media all over the place. He's not Mr. Willy Nilly, just like, oh, did I reveal something? He knows exactly everything he does is so intentional. I mean, shoot, Army of the Dead trailer is cuts in the. I mean, come on. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. I mean, I, that is the funniest thing. I know. And of course, that's the first image he puts out. I know. And of course, yeah. in the I love everybody Netflix immediately. Montage. Yeah, in the Netflix montage, like that scene is still, you know, one of the three quick shots that go. Back. Right. <laughs> he um, wins another one. <laughs> I think, and especially with the four-hour cut, like even if Zach like filmed that, you know, like Cyborg plugging in and showing showing a backstory, like. He could have filmed it thinking like, oh, this is really cool. Maybe I'll include it like supplemental material later. But when I finally yeah. put the theatrical cut in 2017 together, I probably won't be able to include this. It's right, a funny sure. The fans will really dig it. But now he's doing the full four hours. He can be like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> gonna be there, I'll so. go ahead and plug this in. Why not? <laughs> and why not? And why not? Right? Yep. <laughs> I just think it would be such a... Watching this movie is going to be so weird because it, it is still, you have to think of it very much as this is footage that he thought was coming in 2017, right? So there's right. going to be a lot of creative decisions that you'll watch and say like, oh, these were made because maybe at that time when he thought he was going to be able to do two more movies, he was just laying the groundwork to have Supergirl in there. And maybe in 2017, there might have been conversations at the Warner Brothers level where they were just like, hey, why don't you thread in Supergirl? Because maybe one day we would like to do a Supergirl movie at that yep. point. His Justice League, even in 2017, was still meant to be the foundation for mm -hmm. several other DC films springing out of it. So I could see a reference to Supergirl in much the same way that like, you know, he included scenes of the, the metahumans being discovered in BBS. Like he knew they were going to be used for Justice League. But right. in Justice League then, he could could have potentially been throwing out seeds that were going to be flowered in, in many other places. Yeah. No doubt. So much Look, to man, unpack. We can't wait, man. Yeah. We, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, this was a blast. We are, you know, as you can tell, we're pretty obsessed with this stuff. So we don't have – there's not a lot of people out there that we can uh, – yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really plug in and yeah. just kind of do a deep dive on geeky stuff like this. Um, I, I went and got a tattoo today and the guy was like, I told him I had to get, be, be back here for the interview. And he was like, well, send me the link to your interview and I'll, I'll check it. I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty narrow lane. I don't know if you're going to want to watch this interview, but I'll send it to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, don't forget though, guys, that I'm a Marvel shill who, who hates Zach. Okay. Exactly. We, yeah. we, we know, yeah. Sean, we know. Yeah. <laughs> We still unfollowed. <laughs> yeah, dude. Thanks no, so I'm much. For on. We appreciate no problem, it. Guys. This is a lot of fun. You want to um, let everybody know where they can find you? Yes. Uh, at Sean underscore O'Connell uh, on Twitter. Uh, the, the book has a, a, an account at RTSC book. Uh, you can follow me on Cinema Blend on a daily basis. Uh, thank you for mentioning the YouTube series that we do, Hannah Solik and myself. Uh, we recorded one today where we uh, did the history of Dark Side and what to expect from him uh, in nice. Justice League. So it was fun to break Beautiful. down his mythology. And um, yeah, uh, pre-order the book, if you could, please. Pre-orders are, 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 I can't emphasize how important pre-orders are uh, for a first-time author because it really tells the publisher uh, how much interest is in it and how much they need to uh, market it and get the word out. And, um, and I honestly do believe that as you guys have talked about, you know, the, the amount of marketing that needs to be done on behalf of the movie um, right. I think the book can can help that, uh, you know, selfishly, I want people to pick it up and read it, obviously. Uh, but I think that it can really inform people. It's a, it's a, it's an easy read. And I think people can pick it up and really be informed about how important the Snyder Cut is uh, and, and hopefully draw more eyeballs to it when it hits HBO Max. No, that's awesome. We and like I said, we'll we'll have links uh, below for your Twitter accounts as well as the pre-order links. Um, and we recommend that you check that out. I will say we pre-ordered it, so we're looking forward to <laughs> giving it a read. Um, you, like I said, using it as a tool to inform others um, so, so that much. we don't... I sincerely it's going to be passed enjoy. around a lot. I really yeah. do. Oh, we're looking forward to it, man. That's my only concern at this point is that I hope you guys enjoy it. Yep. Awesome. Um, well, thanks again, man. We Hopefully we can have you back on at some point. We can talk closer to the movie or after the movie and um, do another deep dive on this stuff. It was awesome. Sounds good, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks, Sean. Yep. Yeah, you too. Take care. Thanks. 
Once again, we want to thank Sean for jumping on the podcast. Uh, you can find him at the handles that he mentioned previously. They, those are also listed below. Also, links are down there for you to pre-order his book. Um, and uh, Ryan, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us? Yep. Uh, we would. We do want to invite everybody to leave their comments um, about the video. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, if you want to chat more about uh, Justice League, please feel free to do so. We love talking about this movie, as you can tell. Um, and we also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Cape Cash Show. Uh, we love talking geek things on there as well. So until next time, Brandon. Brandon.